So hopefully YouTube sends out a notification for this one, and hopefully my mic is working now. It seems Windows 10, being the absolute shit operating system that it is, decided what it should do was um, decide to randomly change what my microphone is to an input that isn't even plugged in. Um, because YouTube doesn't let you change your mic midstream. Um, nothing I could do about it, but there we go. Right, so yeah, as I was saying, and at least it sent the notification out again, what we were going to be doing was um, an alternative history stream, hence I've got these German helmet on. Um, so yeah, there we are. So talking about alternative history. So not to do with me, but alternative history to do with nations or whatever. Mushroom, I can I suppose I can so, sort of see a mushroom shape to it, um, also known as a dickhead helmet, but it's actually a very good helmet in terms of physical protection. Yeah, well, what if the Soviet Union didn't collapse? Yeah, what if East Germany didn't collapse? Well, yeah, the problem is we can't talk about every single scenario at once, so I have to pick a good one to start with and then start chatting about it. But yeah, there's the bow. So, yeah. Well, like I was saying, if you have some sort of history event and then, um, you know, like you decide. Um, so I'm just trying to stop. There we go. That's Windows sorting out where it's sending annoying pop ups because Windows 10 is shit. Um, well, if Pearl Harbor never happened, America might not have joined World War II. Yep. East German M56 helmet. Although it's the last gen of it because it's the one that's actually got the really good liner in it. Hence, you know, like plastic bits, the foam and all that. Well, if only Nagasaki was bombed, then Japan probably wouldn't have surrendered. But if you mean if Nagasaki was bombed and then another Japanese city was bombed, Japan probably would have surrendered. So, yeah, right. We can't, as said, we can't suddenly talk about 50 different historical, um, you know, things at once. So um, what we'd have to do is look at a particular thing that seems interesting, everybody would have to chat about that. Well, what if the D-Day landings never happened? The Soviet Union would eventually have still crushed uh, Germany. There'd still been the Soviet Union, even without Stalin, because Lenin, that was still a thing. Like, if he magically found a plan for the atom bomb, that's a bit of a disturbing thought. Um, but yeah, as, as in, uh, Germany had the capacity to actually make nuclear weapons, and they knew exactly how to do it from the get-go. Yeah, probably a very bad thing. Well, the problem is, he did give Stalin a lot of power. Well, if Nazi Germany won the Battle of Britain, they'd still have to win a sea war, which the Kriegsmarine couldn't have done because it was far smaller than the Royal Navy. And then even assuming that they had both air and sea supremacy, trying to land with the very small landing force the Kriegsmarine actually had in terms of like transport, they could never have won that. So it basically was a stalemate against Britain. No, I've not read that if it's a book. Yeah, what would we be doing instead, Mike? That's an interesting one. <laughs> uh, World War One would have been very different, but again, it's hard to say how that would have changed things. Oh, cheers, Laser. Yeah, that would be interesting. I'd assume if America never declared independence and never had a war of... Um, independence then they'd probably the same thing would happen as most british colonies that later down the line they just democratically had a vote or had to pay some money to the british government to then get freedom or the crown or whatever um well japan did use gas in world war ii but if it was like world war one I, I don't think it would have changed much unless germany used the nerve agents What would happen about if the Winter War never happened? 
obviously the Soviet Union wouldn't have tried to invade Finland, and then maybe Hitler would have wouldn't have thought they've been such a pushover. It's hard to say. I have no idea on that one, General. Is that the one where they had the ship they sunk that was full of mustard gas and it leaked everywhere? What if Russia won the Cold War? Well, it's hard to say. What was in the United States economically collapsed and Russia was doing just fine. The Soviet Union was doing just fine. <laughs> yeah, if Hitler had been accepted into art school, that's a good one. There might have been a decent painter named Adolf Hitler. I don't know what American anime would be called. Um, well, they didn't win the space war because America landed on the moon, if you mean the space race. The Soviets were sending stuff up to begin with, but then they never landed anyone on the moon. Well, the War of 1812 is kind of interesting because it was a stalemate. I suppose the only thing you could say that would happen with the War of 1812 maybe is annexation of, um, you know, like annexation of Canada. So Canada is actually part of America. Which period of Germany being splitted? Because Germany's not always been a unified country. Because obviously, prior to like Prussia and everything, Germany was a lot of different states. And obviously, do you mean East and West Germany? Or oh, all the countries in the UK can obviously serve in the British Army. Yeah, like Northern Ireland, Wales, the uh, England, Scotland. Germany winning World War One. Uh, oh, that's more interesting. What you mean, what if North Korea won in the um, Cold War rather than, not the Cold War, like the Korean War rather than it being a stalemate? That, I don't think Not So Midnight, that's actually alternative history. Oh, no, Windows 10 is going, oh, you need to restart your device. Fuck off, Windows 10. Well... We're not talking about the future, are we, of alternative history? What, well, like uh, Operation Unthinkable and all that sort of stuff, this name cannot be insulted. Yeah, the problem is, Mike, is I was hoping people wouldn't keep spamming things and would more say, oh, this sounds a good one, let's talk about this, but knowing live streams, I don't think that's going to happen. If the Cuban Missile Crisis never happened, I don't think it would have done much, really, would it? Because... The thing is, obviously, it's more like if the Cuban Missile Crisis actually kicked off and there was a nuclear war, when you get the more interesting stuff. If Palpatine didn't say, do it. I don't know. Yep. If nukes hadn't been invented, I definitely agree with that. You'd have had another Third World War sort of between the Soviets and the Americans. Now, modern day, there'd be no chance the UK could fight against Russia. Well, the thing is, until the hydrogen bomb was invented, atomic war wouldn't be all that bad. And I don't try and sound like the Doctor Strange all the way. What I mean is... Um, before the hydrogen bomb was invented, they didn't have nations didn't have massive stockpiles of atomic bombs, and atomic bombs are relatively low yield. So while a nuclear war would still be terrible, you have to understand that a lot of it would be bombed being dropped by bombers. Some of them would be shot down before they reached their targets, and there wasn't a massive stockpile of high yield bombs anyway. So it's 
when people think of mutually assured destruction, it's basically ICBM, you know, launching against each other with hydrogen bombs. What you mean? What if the crash nuke did explode in the US? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll read yours out, Richard, because that's good. So Richard said, what if Trump had become a great painter instead of a businessman? I will do a painting, a great painting. Nobody does painting like I do, and I'll make universities pay for it. Well, so there was the Treaty of Versailles against Austro-Hungary, not all this. Um, then you probably wouldn't have had the rise of the Nazis. Uh, I assume we'd all be some sort of peasants, wouldn't we, Defiant Shackleton? And we'd certainly not have the internet if the Industrial Revolution never happened. As in, if Germany never invaded the Soviet Union. Whether or not there would have been a Cold War between the Soviets and the Germans, or if eventually the Soviets would have invaded Germany anyway. All right, Stephanie, you've got a block now because the last couple of streams you've just been spamming messages, so it's clear you're not ever going to take part in the chat. Yeah, so why don't yeah, a load of you in the chat try and come up with a good topic and then we'll stick to one topic like um, Alex says, because otherwise the problem is it's just quick fire, like Mike said, you know, just quickly raising the point going, and this might have happened right next one. Now, that's not alternative history, is it, Cloaker? That stuff happened. Yeah, I think that is a good one, Mike. What if the Industrial Revolution never happened? So, right, everybody in the chat, stop um, spamming questions, and you can all pitch in on this now. Let's see if this works. So what if the Industrial Revolution never happened? So basically, factories were never set up to mass-produce goods. You know, you didn't get steam and electric sort of, you know, machinery and all this. So everything was still made on a small scale. So this would be um, quite an interesting one. So I think you would probably, and we, I'm assuming with this, we're going to have to assume that in the future, nobody would have been able to have invented steam power and all this sort of stuff. Exactly, no trains or cars. So we're going to have to do like a thing where... Um, Oh, sorry, it's just something quite distracting. When I talk, the helmet echoes my voice ever so slightly. It's quite funny. Yeah, so. We have no transport other than horse and carts and things like that. Um, I imagine agriculture would still be a much bigger sector because, you know, you wouldn't have any factory farming, would you, without the Industrial Revolution? So everything would be actual fields and livestock. That's the time, although that's one minute slow. Um, yeah, Richard would definitely have um, a job in high demand, wouldn't he, Mike? But yeah, it's interesting to think about that. I think that what you'd probably find is the best example is if you ever go to some of those museums that are like early Victorian museums set before the Industrial Revolution, they're probably the ones that give you a good ex idea of what sort of tech people would have. Well, here's the thing. I imagine with, because you could still keep making more and more advanced muskets, even without the industrial sort of factory system, I imagine you would still end up getting better um, weapons, even in that sort of system. But yeah, it would take a lot longer, especially for the mass production of ammunition. That would be an issue. I'm trying to think. There's one... It's not close to me. Um, let me see how far away it is. Black Country Museum, it's called. And that's one Dudley. Okay, so let's have a look on the map and see where that is. Yeah, it's quite far north for me, but that was a good one. We went there with primary school and they have lots of things on... Um, 
yeah, certainly can Iron Man. But yeah, the Black Country Museums, although it's got some Industrial Revolution stuff, a lot of the stuff in there is like, you know, blacksmith stuff and old-fashioned mines. It was a bit later than the Victorian era where they were putting radioactive stuff everywhere. Yep, yeah, you'd expect your kids when they were like four or five, wouldn't you, to go out and do something. Yeah, you'd never have petroleum-based products. This gets really interesting the more you think about it. If um, Let's have a Google and see if anybody's ever written this. What if the Industrial Revolution ever happened? Right. Let's go on Quora, which is sometimes a good site and sometimes not. So this person on here thinks that there'd be lots more people doing agriculture, like we said. Yeah, smaller scale warfare. Yeah, no aluminium stuff like that. Yeah, oh, electronics. I didn't even think of that, but obviously that makes sense. Would you You'd have like no electric? You could have power from piston engines, either steam or oil fired. Electric generators and motors would not exist. All engines would be house sized or larger. Medicines could would probably plateau somewhere around 1950s level. That's an interesting thing to say as well. Yeah, no telegraph, no telephone. <laughs> Yeah, there'd be less pollution, that's a good thing. No planes, no rockets, anything like that. So yeah, that is an interesting thing to think about, isn't it? Well, the thing is, the Dark Ages finished quite a long time, because you still have the Renaissance and all that, it's just, you'd be stuck in like a permanent early 1800s. Well, I don't think the population would ever get that big, because this is the thing. If you had lots and lots of wild animals, and the people weren't breeding or surviving because of all the medicine, you know, disadvantages and all this at um, an incredible rate. They would probably be living quite sustainably, I imagine. But yeah, that's the problem, modern medicine, isn't it? Because if you wouldn't get that if you hadn't got factories and refrigeration and all this sort of stuff to make a lot of medicine. Yeah, what if McDonald's and fast food didn't exist? East German M56. Yeah, the interesting thing is as well, Mike, isn't it, is that in a lot of these shit hit the fan situations where people think of like post-apocalypse, a lot of this technology still exists. It's just nobody really knows how to maintain it properly or create it. Whereas this is a situation where this stuff would never have been invented and people wouldn't be any the wiser, which makes it even weirder. Yeah, so we could then, Laser, be still stuck in the miasma theory, couldn't we? And all things like that, where germs are not discovered and things like that. So people do not know what causes illnesses and things like that. And they still have crazy kind of superstitious ideas about where illnesses come from. Well, here's the thing, yeah, because you'd have a lot less people going to America, wouldn't you? Because you wouldn't ha ever have, like, big ships transporting them. It would just be, like, old wooden ships. Oh, Chernobyl definitely wouldn't have happened if there wasn't an industrial revolution. <laughs> Nuclear power would never have been discovered about that. 
Yeah, well, what we're saying is certain science fields of science could continue, but not as they have done. This is where it gets really complicated because you'd have to go through a massive kind of tech tree, wouldn't you, almost, and say, because this bit's not happened, the stuff that have spin off from this haven't happened, but maybe it will diverge in a different way. One of the ones I find interesting is what happened if the um, air rifles became standard military weapons, not the musket, because I don't know if you know this, but I think it was in the 1800s, the Austrians invented a military air rifle that was very good. It was just too expensive and cost, you know, too expensive and difficult to manufacture en masse. Um, but they were much better than the muskets of the day. But what would be interesting is if that caught on and then rather than having conventional firearms, we then had, you know, like more and more advancement put into sophisticated air weapons. But yeah, I imagine you'd have got like the PCP kind of. I wonder if you'd end up getting vehicles because we're not on the industrial revolution thing here. But I wonder if you'd end up getting vehicles developed that are just massive air tanks with cannons in rather than cartridges. Yeah, well, because the thing is, you camouflage only really came about, didn't it, due to smokeless powder? Because before that, you gave things bright colours so you could see where troop formations were through all the smoke and that on the battlefield. I haven't seen that, Richard, but it sounds interesting. What if the wheel did not exist? Hmm, yeah, um, I think we'd still be stone men, uh, stone age men, wouldn't we? I mean, what could they come up with like something with loads and loads of sides that's not technically a wheel? Could they invent that? I think so, and I think those children would probably die quite young just due to lack of medicines, and we'd be wheelie screwed, exactly. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, that would have um, slowed down the advancement of Europe, because the bubonic plague was actually very good for the development of Europe, because what ended up happening with the bubonic plague was that regular people could get a much higher wage because so many of them had died that, you know, their services were suddenly more required. So, yeah. See, that was very good where we had a bit more of um, <laughs> painted selfies. Yeah, they'd, they'd have to get artists to do it or have a mirror where they could then paint looking in the mirror. Oh, that's cool. In this stream, Daniel, we're not really talking about stuff that actually exists. We're talking about alternative history, but your English is good. Oh, yeah, so what if the great... I don't know, I've heard it might be a historical misconception that the Great Fire of London totally eradicated the plague or the Great Plague. But I think it was still dying out at that time anyway, wasn't it, due to the winter being sort of less favourable for its spreading? I don't know if America could have taken over the world in the 1940s. I mean, you could have an interesting one where in the Korean War, what if America used nuclear weapons and America got a bigger and bigger nuclear stockpile? That might have been quite interesting. But yeah. It's sort of strange to think, isn't it, with some of these? But that's why it's interesting to think about. But the reason I thought about this stream is just in one of Mike's streams, I ended up chatting away with a guy for quite a while that was on about different scenarios in World War II. That's sort of interesting. America actually had a plan they, if, if they wanted to side with Germany. What If there was no particular war or no war in general? Sadly, I don't think humans would ever be capable of not making war, considering primates and things kill each other. 
what would happen if a cold war went hot well it's going to depend what period of cold war um it happens in wouldn't it because if it was the early cold war that's when you could potentially have a very small nuclear engagement with troops um later cold war it would just be mutually assured destruction Yeah, that's the point, Richard, isn't it? You wouldn't even have factories producing nails and things like that. I don't know who that is, I'm afraid, Daniel. Well, what if the gas mask was not invented, but chemical warfare was still a thing? Then I'm assuming you'd have chemical warfare being used to devastating effect, like an earlier form of nuclear war, where there was no prevention against it. Cheers, Blaine's. I don't really think so, F4 Phantom. I mean, the British Empire was about a third of the world, wasn't it? You know, guesstimately, when it was at its peak in, like, the late 1700s or early 1800s, whenever the peak was. Um, but the thing is, obviously, Britain, I don't think, would have ever been able to truly defeat and manage all the countries in the world. Oh, okay, I did not know the early 1920s were like the peak of the British Empire. I always assumed it would have been in the 1800s. The worst disaster in history was probably Chernobyl or maybe Bhopal. It depends, because it depends if you consider stuff like global warming and what all the shit we're throwing into the oceans to be an ongoing crisis. Or whether you think of a crisis as like a single historical event that happened at one point, you know, that cost a lot of lives at the time. But I suppose World War II was a disaster, wasn't it? Because it stops the crops being eaten by bugs. Well, that is a good one, um, F4 Phantom. What if the Great Depression didn't happen? That would have been very different then. If you think in the 1930s, if everybody didn't lose all their money, then, you know, the sort of more radical ideologies didn't get anywhere near as popular. Well, I don't know if you could ha not have steel helmets, because you'd then still have bronze helmets, wouldn't you? But you'd still get, um, because they had, like, steel medieval helmets, so it's not really hard to make steel modern helmets from that. But unless you mean, why, if they never invented steel, they just still have bronze weapons. M40 Stauham has identified that this is an M56, correct? eBay, more day, more day. Oh, Britain didn't make any shouts, so there you go. What if Britain did what Britain did? The thing is, logistically, even if you said that something like Nazi Germany had M4s or M16s and stuff like that, unless they're going to have completely modern tanks and aircraft, they would still lose because logistically, you know, fighting the full force of the Soviet Union just with slightly better small arms wasn't going to make a difference. OK, there's an alternative history one. What if Hitler accepted the design of this helmet into um, Nazi German service? Well, they still wouldn't have won the war, but they'd have a helmet that looks like this. The earthquake and tsunami, yes, elite SAS. Yeah, did Mussolini come about though before the Great Depression? He did, didn't he? Um, so Italy might have still become fascist, but yeah, there wouldn't have been the Nazi Party or National Socialist German Workers Party. What the ones the Death Star crewmen have, Peach? Well, what if Guy Fawkes was successful with the gunpowder plot? That would be the more interesting thing, wouldn't it? Because if he didn't try it, it was really no different than him failing it. But I don't know. I doubt World War II would have happened. You might have had some countries fighting each other, but whether or not you just still had the communists trying to expand in the east, it would definitely be different than how it was.
Oh, I know what helmet. Yeah, you mean now, Peach. Yeah, well, again, Iron Man, if they hadn't invaded too many places and then they just secured their borders and made, like, more Siegfried lines, um, they could have lasted quite a while. The issue was, yeah, start multiple wars or multiple fronts, have no idea how tough the Soviet Union is going to be. Uh, I got this one on eBay, and it was about £30, and this was years ago. Yeah, then we'd probably be going back to um, the uh, question earlier of what if um, America never declared, declared independence, because they'd probably have lost the American War of Independence. Oh, and we'd still be Saxons, Avon. Oh, that's the point, no alphas, I didn't think about that, but yeah, even if they had modern equipment, unless they secured oil fields and managed to hold them, they wouldn't be able to run that equipment very well, would they? Which Martin Luther King? Um, the one who made Protestantism, or Martin Luther King, the civil rights bloke? I really don't know about that one. Well, the thing is, like we were saying earlier, if the Nazis somehow had got the atomic weapons early enough and actually used them, they would have won the war. The issue is um, they never came close to actually getting it. Oh, I'd probably agree with that, Iron Man. Again, it's hard to say, isn't it, with some of those things, because you never know what could have happened. Because, again, that's the whole point of alternative history, but... Yeah. But JFK probably got killed, didn't he, because he was sorting out a lot of corruption in America in certain places. Oh, well, <laughs> we'd not have as much factory farming, that's for sure, if they hadn't got antibiotics for animals. The Soviets would have still eventually beaten Nazi Germany. Or what if Stonewall Jackson didn't get killed? I think if the Confederates reached Washington, they may have been able to basically get a temporary sort of, um, not a ceasefire, I don't know what you call it, you know, like a non-aggression pact kind of thing, that sort of thing. Um... But I think the Union later on probably would have tried to retake the South again. Then they'd have never probably gone to the M16. And we'd be getting better and better battle rifles now rather than normalised ammunition. There's an interesting Forgotten Weapons video about that where they were saying, you know, if America actually had adopted the FAL rather than the M14, would that have actually meant that, you know, the M16 wouldn't have come along because they wouldn't have had to change away from the M14 really quickly? I think they actually might be, because the Hugo Boss outfits are part of the appeal, aren't they? Um, I think it's probably the last generation of it, because it's got, like, the plastic, and let me just take it off a second and show you. I know it's not related to the stream, really, but... Oh, if there was only cheek filter masks, they'd probably keep improving them, and then they get to the stage of not being awful, but... Um, I assume this is the last gen of East German helmet because it's got the plastic actual, um, you know, bit that holds liner in. It's got the soft level liner. It's got the foam. Um, so, yeah, I'd assume this was the last generation generation of East German helmet. <laughs> yeah, no, it would be called the hot wall. And um, as we said earlier in the stream, it depends on which period of the Cold War it went hot in. If it was the 1950s, before the hydrogen bomb was invented or starting to go into mass production, 
you may have had a lot of people killed in a nuclear engagement and then um, like a ceasefire declared or stuff like that. That's basically the 1984 scenario, isn't it? That there was a limited nuclear war and then the um, basically a stalemate happened and that's where it all starts from there. Well, it, I suppose it depends. Can they do that without firing faults and, um, you know, like barrel issues, like barrel overheating issues? Because in theory, it would be a good idea if you could have like a massive magazine on your back. Because uh, in theory, that's like what um, loads of sci-fi stuff has had for ages, hasn't it? Like guys with massive sort of like rucksacks on the whole chain gun ammo or whatever. And I said, you could have belt fed machine guns that do that, but you'd have a bit of a problem unless you had a system where it would f keep feeding really smoothly. Oh, that's annoying laser. That's interesting, yellow, blue. I didn't know that, but yeah. Yeah, that's the point I was sort of getting at, Peach, is that if you keep firing a gun continuously, you're going to burn the barrel out, aren't you? So there'd be limitations to it, like how quickly you could shoot it or continuously you can shoot it. What was in the one after World War One before World War Two breathing seagull? I imagine the Soviet Union would have expanded further west, um, which may have changed the dynamics. I think if the Soviet Union expanded more to the West, you'd probably have found most of the Western countries teaming up against the Soviet Union. So World War II would have probably been the fascists and the allies fighting against the Soviets. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I man, what if the internet was never invented? What if there was no religion? What, everybody was an atheist or any, everybody just didn't care at all? I'm, sh I'm sure humans would find other reasons to kill each other if it isn't over my God's better than your God. I'm sure it would be my flag's better than your flag or I want your possessions. If gunpowder wasn't invented, I'd assume you'd just keep getting better and better bow weapons till essentially the technology reached a point where it couldn't advance further. And then you'd get more and more armor developed to re resist arrows. Yeah, we were saying about that earlier. Um, what if the um, military air rifles designed in the 1800s actually became the thing rather than being like kind of a failed project? Yeah, my dad's bigger than your dad, exactly. If Germany took Moscow, I don't know if they'd have necessarily even won on the Eastern Front, because the Soviets were prepared to fight pretty drastically, weren't they? Well, here's the thing. If Trotsky succeeded Lenin, Trotsky was into the idea of communism across all the countries, wasn't he? So I think Trots Trotsky would have been far more aggressive in invading other countries than Stalin was. Um, and that's where you'd probably get into that scenario of, um, you know invading um sort of more of western europe and then ending up world war ii being between the axis and allies fighting the soviets you probably have a very different political system radioactive gas masks i'd assume it just end up a lot like lots of modern islamic countries are hello to switzerland Uh, thanks for the donation again, Laser. I appreciate it, but that's a shame. Hopefully you can watch it back a bit later if anything interesting comes up. But what? So what if Poland Avon was still part of like Prussia, Russia and Austria?
Yeah, that was the thing I was sort of saying, Yellow Blue, that Trotsky would have probably tried to invade more Western European countries, which would have led to the fascists being seen as the allies in World War II. Um, and it could have gone very differently if you had sort of Britain, potentially America, getting involved. Um, you know, like Britain, Britain, Germany, Italy, teaming up France to fight. Although France was quite left-leaning, wasn't it, at this point? Hello to Australia, then. What, so what if war broke out between Czechoslovakia and Nazi Germany in 1939, sort of, period? That would be interesting. If, if Czechoslovakia was able to hold its own for long enough, and maybe some other Eastern European nations supported Czechoslovakia, then that might have been quite interesting. But not necessarily if, um, you know, Czechoslovakia was just crushed and then, you know, stuff went on the same way as it had before. I really don't know of that one, because Britain actually sold arms to both sides in the American Civil War, but do you mean, like, so providing, like, actual military aid to the CSA? That's an inter interesting one. It might have even ended up being a bit like Yugoslavia, where it ended up being a communist country that just wasn't, you know, like, part of the Soviet bloc, I suppose. That would be the most communist option. And, yeah, it could have just become an inde independent democracy like Austria. Or it could have wanted to be part of NATO for protection. I'm sure it would be different if Princess Diana never died, but I don't know how. I don't know if Britain would have actually, um... right, if you don't want to take part in an alternative history thing, you can fuck off then, can't you? Bye. Um, so what if in Britain invaded and took uh, back the US during the American Civil War? Well, I don't know if Britain would have had the military power to take on the Union, because where Britain was very strong was its navy. Britain's actual army was very small compared to the Union, sort of in the American Civil War period. That's interesting, yeah, so Bartos, that's an other point, isn't it? What if Poland kicked the communists out in 56 with Hungary? Would they have then joined NATO? I think they'd be more popular masks than Leshen. Yeah, that's also an interesting one, isn't it? What if the US was actually lots more separate kind of um, countries, like Spain owned a chunk of it, France owned a chunk of it, Britain owned a chunk of it? That's interesting, but do you know what kind of planes the Czechoslovakians actually had? Were they quite decent ones at the time, or were they just like biplanes? If they were not banned, they'd continue to ship post uprising. Britain officially supported the Republican position, but supposedly British uh, civilians fought on both sides of the war, so... Well, that's actually an interesting one, Yellow Blue. I didn't know about that, but yeah, that's sort of interesting, isn't it? The, the French help America kick Britain out, but then the Fran French use it as an opportunity to take over America. Mass production would have worked better for them, a killer Pac-Man, but they just still had all the problems with fuel and everything else, I imagine. Uh, he'd have crushed the Soviet Union if it was Cyborg Nixon. 
I think if Britain and France actually attacked Germany on the Western Front, just as they, you know, had started invading Poland, so within a day of the invasion of Poland, if Britain and France actually invaded Germany at that point, they'd have actually stood a good chance of ending the war quite early on. The problem was, of course, that we basically let the Germans fight a war on one front and, you know, there wasn't enough troops and the line wasn't well enough defended. Well, Operation Sea Lion was brought up earlier, but the thing is, and I've watched quite a few actual videos on this from channels that seem to know a lot about it, is that the main issue is you'd first have to assume that they could win the Battle of Britain and that um, the Luftwaffe got air supremacy. Um, that didn't happen. You'd then have, so you'd have to first have that as a thing. Then you'd have to assume that with their air supremacy, um, the smaller amount of the Kriegsmarine, because the Kriegsmarine was a lot smaller than the um, Royal Navy, they'd have to assume that, you know, the Kriegsmarine with air superiority from the Luftwaffe would have been able to wipe out the British Navy to be able to first even attempt to try and landing, which is unlikely. Then when that happens, you'd have to assume that the Kriegsmarine would somehow be enough, uh, you know, have enough transport capacity to ferry enough troops onto the UK mainland that they could actually stage a proper beach landing sort of thing in multiple places, which there wasn't really evidence they'd have had any chance of carrying out. So I don't think Operation Sea Lion was ever really going to happen. Well, the Chernobyl one's pretty horrifying if you consider, you know, like they didn't drain the water and all that sort of stuff. If the corium melted down, hit the water table, it made a thermonuclear or thermal explosion. Sorry, I should say, because it wouldn't have been thermonuclear, would it? Big thermal explosion, dirty bomb, taking out the other reactors. You'd have probably had massive parts of Europe uninhabitable. If we assume the Axis controlled Western Europe and the Soviet Union still existed, I think the Cold War would be between the Axis nations and the Soviet Union still, yeah, because they were still ideologically enemies. If the Warsaw Uprising was successful, you'd have to then well, assume that the Poles managed to beat the Germans out of all the country or just Warsaw, because otherwise Warsaw would basically be a surrounded city. Ah, okay, I did not know that, so thanks for sharing that, but yeah, I'll have to look up the Saarland Offensive, but yeah, thank you for that. Uh, no, Chris, I don't think they did. This is the first comment I think I've seen from you on this stream, and it's on live chat, not top chat. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't even know about that. But yeah, like you said, it mostly seems like the French didn't commit enough troops, which you can't really blame them for. Yeah, so they half assed attacked the Siegfried line, got the shit kicked out of them, as you'd expect, because they didn't send enough men. Yeah, don't use the word safety because YouTube hates that. Well, this one's already been brought up quite a few times. What if Britain joined the American Civil War? Let's just assume Britain supported the Confederacy with more military aid and potentially troops. They could have probably forced a stalemate in the war um, and a peace agreement, un you know, under sort of trade deals with the CSA. But I don't think there'd be any way Britain, even by helping the Confederacy, could have crushed the Union just because of how big the Union's sort of army was. That's really weird, Chris, because your recent comments have shown up, but obviously not for what you're trying to type. Oh, that's cool. 
history. I'll try and remember to do that later on. What if Avon didn't exist? But it lets you do it like that. That's strange. So what if Avon didn't exist? Would Sieb Gorman be the um, mask-making company of Britain now? Ask interesting swan, so yeah. Then the USSR would probably have won um, because they'd have a better working economy. So yeah, would would Sieb Gorman have made an equivalent of the S10? Um, like made their own mask that would have been the British mask, and then would Sieb Gorman be competing still for military contracts um, with other countries? And then would Sieb Gorman still go bust? That's, it's a really weird one to think about, wouldn't it, if certain products hadn't come out? It's like saying what would have happened if like you'd had Apple stuff but not Microsoft Windows? Would another OS have come along, or would everybody just own Apple products? Not off the top of my head, Leshin. Let me look it up. I've got some old binoculars. I can show a video on them at some point. But Oh, uh, is that the one where they blew up the dam? Because if it's saying about Norwegian heavy water stuff, I know about all the stuff where they blew up the dam and all that. Well, I know Linux is around, but what I'm saying is, were there any, you know, major OSs at the time? Because I know there's Ubuntu, Linux, and all this, but... I thought you said Operation Pornstar then, but Operation Postmaster. So I have to look it up. Some of these, I don't remember the name of them, but then when I look them up, I'm like, oh yeah, it's that one. Oh, so it was um, a raid that didn't take place. Oh, but they did capture some of it. So, what well, it says they refused to support the raid, but well, it still went ahead, did it? I have to read that one properly at some point, but yeah. Well, it depends on the conspiracy theory, doesn't it? Because all a conspiracy theory actually means is something where more people have come together to lie about something. That's literally all a conspiracy theory means. Well, the US would have still lost the Vietnam War. They'd have probably just lost the Vietnam War harder. The more interesting one, I think, is what if the Sino-Soviet war properly kicked off and there was actually like a big land war um, with the potential for like nuclear conflict between the Soviet Union and communist China. That would have been quite interesting. Like, would the West have then tried to sneak attack Russia? Or I would have no idea about that one, Mr. Ratzenberger. I'm assuming the kids would still understand force, wouldn't they? Because you see, like, these soldiers shoot one of the kids, don't you, in part of it anyway? Because they have them, like, in school still, don't they? So I assume... Ah, so I assume that they would. the kids would understand being beaten by the soldiers... And they would understand that they maybe get food as rewards from doing labour. It's hard to say. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of primitive societies where this has gone on and they have like that. But yeah, it's interesting to think because you couldn't exactly give them instructions, could you?
Yeah, I'm afraid you are late, random sod. In about five minutes, the stream will be over. Yeah, that's the point, Richard. Yeah, like the Wild Boy, Mad Max, and the Boobering. If America still had stuff stationed in Japan, I imagine it would have been a very hard target for the North Koreans, like as a united communist Korea, to attack. I imagine it would give them better positions to, um, you know, try and do more communist sort of takeovers in other Asian countries. Yeah. I think so far, though, the Industrial Revolution one's been the most interesting topic because that's the one which kind of throws up so many what would have gone different things. Right, what if communism never existed? So, in theory, you'd have had um, no Russian Revolution, would you? Unless there was a Russian Revolution with a different ideology behind it. But no Russian Revolution... So Russia would probably have kept fighting in World War One, not very effectively, but it would probably cause Germany to surrender a bit faster. Um, then World War Two would have been very different if World War Two even happened. If the US and USSR didn't get involved in World War Two, so what we're saying, like it's the Battle of Britain stage, I think you'd have had a stalemate basically, where um, Britain was on its own that Nazi Germany weren't really able to invade Britain. So then you'd probably have a tit-for-tat war going on that wasn't very large scale. If Germany ever got to nuclear weapons, then they'd probably then use them on Britain to force a surrender. But otherwise, I don't think you'd really have much happening on both sides unless a peace agreement was just somehow made. If Alaska became independent, would it want to join up with Canada, or would Alaska be its own country up in the north of, um, you know, up there? I don't. I really don't know that one. That's quite cool. If they've got a really small chem suit, UIPE chemical suit. Uniform integrated protective ensemble. Uh, images. Yeah, it looks pretty slimline. Looks quite cool, actually. Yeah, it looks a lot more comfy than a lot of NBC suits, doesn't it? So, yeah, hopefully stuff like that will start turning up on the surplus market at some point. Maybe Weapon Collector would... Um, end up doing those videos I don't know random sod with YouTube though there's gonna always be channels you'll find that you find interesting well generally a lot of them are sold by surplus sellers in Western Europe but if you mean if somebody in Poland is selling one and I'm in the UK like a week, if that. Stuff can come from um, Eastern Europe or Central Europe very quickly. Because bear in mind, you can get a flight to Poland from, like, London and arrive the same day, so. Well, the Soviet Union would have been a much better financial position if Chernobyl never happened. Because prior to Chernobyl, the ruble was still about equivalent to a dollar, wasn't it? And it was Chernobyl that literally tanked the ruble because of the huge cleanup cost of it. Um... So, yeah, the Soviet Union, I think, would have survived for longer, but I still think probably in the end something would have got the Soviet Union. So what, what if sort of none of Britain's colonies ever revolted? What if, like, none of Spain's colonies ever revolted? All that sort of stuff. You'd basically end up in that scenario just having the European countries, I guess, owning nearly all the planet, and they may be warring between each other to take over that territory. 
tomorrow's live stream will just be a normal live stream. Well, UK nuclear plants, at least, were built to a better standard than things like the RBMK reactors were, because there was at least containment buildings on British nuclear stuff, like the American nuclear stuff. But let's just assume, for the sake of it, there was a really bad meltdown kind of explosion at a UK nuclear plant. I think it would have completely fucked the UK, to be honest, because if you think how small the land mass is, um, and how under a capitalist system it would actually be a lot harder to get people to just willingly help clean it up. I'm sure Britain would have come up with a very other cheap SMG if the stem was never invented. So, there's a communist system, but it's not oppressive. I assume what would eventually happen is you'd probably start having lots of problems with economics, because I don't know if you had a system like that, how you would actually enforce the idea of... Is it been, it, you could have socialist systems that works if worked if there was capitalist elements to them. But I don't think you could ever get a full-on communist, no-money sort of system ever working. I just don't think it would ever happen. I assume we'd be a republic then, yellow-blue. Well, the thing is, Europe isn't actually a country. Australian survivalists, obviously, Europe is a continent with different countries on it, and those countries have historically had empires. But yeah, in the sense that European countries, yeah, had massive empires. If you think, add the British Empire, the French uh, Empire up, you know, some of the other empires in Europe, you'd have had pretty much most of the globe at that stage. Yeah, I could certainly imagine uh, Brian Blessed as a dictator. Gordon's alive? Yeah, I did say shot zombie, I'd have this helmet on, remember? Right, let's just do the thing for you. Ready? That really rings. Yeah. My ears are actually ringing now. I've got like static, uh, not static, you know, like the tinnitus kind of noise in my ears. I think invading Switzerland would be a very hard thing to do and be a complete waste of manpower, to be honest. I would hope, A10, that it would slowly get reformed, and we'll do this as the last thing because I've gone over an hour now. Um, what I'd assume would happen is that slowly over time, assuming that it never collapses, the USSR and communist bloc countries would have become more and more liberal, or whatever you want to call it, because it was going that way under Gorbachev um, to the point, you know, where they ended up just becoming not too different from the Western countries. And then they probably would only have, you know, have a sort of communist thing in name only. A bit like how China's officially a communist country, but doesn't have that many communist elements. You probably just, you know, get continuous reforms now and then it might go a bit back the other way. But I imagine it would just get more and more, you know, westernized. The, the Axis called the Allies the Allies, did they? Well, I didn't know that, but... Yeah, exactly, Richard. The problem is with communism and a lot of these sort of idealist systems is they just won't work, would they? Right, all right, Shot Zombie, I'll hold on just before I go off. That's the question, what have they called them? They'd have called some the Anglos. I don't think that's alternative history, James, that question. I like both. The thing is, Yugoslavia eventually collapsed, though, didn't it? Into war, uh, warring nations. What would they have said? Um, 
I think when I was watching a documentary on Nazi Germany yesterday, though, they called them the Anglo, um, the Anglo Jewish or Judaic Bolsheviks or something as their enemies, because you know everybody's involved in this Jewish conspiracy against Nazi Germany. The French Revolution never happened. I imagine we'd have more monarchies around today. Oh, thank you very much, Shot Zombie. I really appreciate that. Do you want me to bang the um, Stauhelm again? <laughs> I'll put that towards Blumenthal if I ever find any. But... Yeah, it is. We didn't actually ever say in the stream, though, what if East Germany was um, still around? We've had the what if communists were um, still around, um, but not East Germany. Bang it for every dollar, right? That's 20, wasn't it? I don't want to keep doing that because it's half nine and it might annoy my neighbours. National Volks Army or National Fox Army, the East German People's Army. Oh, 21. Well, that's enough. Um, I've done a video on washing an S10. You can just do it in the sink with a little bit of washing up liquid. Or East Germany almost could exist. Um, what, you mean shots on me? In the sense that you just have two Germanys still. Right, I'll go on a couple of minutes longer. What if the Soviets won in Afghanistan? I think the only way the Soviets could have won in Afghanistan is if they did totally scorched earth and basically ended up killing everyone there. If the Soviets won Afghanistan, I don't know what they'd really get from it other than just being able to get lots of opium from the poppies that are grown there. But of course, it would give them a bit more land, but... That's an interesting shot, Zombie. I didn't know that. Well, because we wanted Germany to be two weaker, separate countries rather than one big country again, because we don't trust the Germans. Well, the IRA didn't actually win, did they? They did some pretty impressive terrorist campaign. I'm not saying that to try and sound like I think what the IRA did was good. I'm just saying, in, in the far as terrorists go, the IRA were pretty good at doing what they did. But if the IRA were just less suppl supplied, I guess the Troubles would have just had less British casualties. Maybe it would have ended a bit sooner. Because, again, you still get, like, bombs going off in Ireland every now and then, you know, like, random politically motivated shootings. Yeah. But yeah, well, knowing my parents' generation shot zombie, I can understand why they might have that attitude. I suppose, yeah, the US probably had less problem with Germany. It's a bit like um, saying that World War One, wasn't it, with the Treaty of Versailles? Um, France really wanted to punish Germany. Britain was sort of like, mm, and um, America was like, no, you shouldn't punish Germany. So obviously, America had the right opinion there. But um, it France was basically the one that was like, no, we want total punishment of Germany because, um, you know, look what they did to our country. Mm, so how would the UK respond as in using military force to take back Ireland or will we give up on it? That's interesting. Well, I really don't know at that point. Yeah, it's just eventually the economy went to shit, didn't it, Shot Zombie? Because they people where they could move back and forth, that apparently really undermined East German economy because it was a much more of a planned economy. And apparently because a lot of West German shops were letting them use East German marks or whatever to buy stuff. And again, you know, the commie block all sort of collapsed around that time, didn't it? Sort of 1990, 1991. Um, but yeah, I do know that East Germany existed for a bit after the German war fell. But yeah, that'd be interesting if the Germanys were banned from reuniting or West Germany said, no, it's going to be too expensive to um, fix all the stuff in East Germany. What would I do if there was a no deal Brexit this month? I don't think it would affect me all that much. In all honesty. Oh, that's interesting, Chris. I didn't know that, but 
But yeah, I'd assume if the IRA totally sort of kicked Britain out and it became just, you know, the Republic of Ireland, they'd probably call it quits and not want, you know, Britain would be humiliated, essentially. Didn't Austria partially get split like Germany, though? Because when I was in um, Vienna, there was a Soviet sector of Vienna, where apparently, you know, lots of nasty things happened to Austrians. Oh, so that's good. I can buy the axe again, which let me do more things. That's an interesting thing. What if the Spanish flu wiped out a lot more people than it did? Yeah, religious wars certainly don't make sense to me when it's essentially different branches of the same religions fighting each other. Because essentially what you're saying is you believe in the exact same thing, just you have a slightly different type of church service but you really despise people of the same religion. That just makes no sense to me. But as I said before, my opinion on religion is I'm very loosely Christian. So, you know, I couldn't care less if you were Catholic, Protestant, Muslim, Jewish, you know, whatever, atheist, Buddhist, Sikh, you know, as long as you're not a dick to other people, it doesn't really matter, does it? You know, that's my opinion on them. Ah, okay, that would explain it then. Yeah, so Vienna was split, but the entire country wasn't. That would, yeah, make absolute sense then. Well, like we were saying earlier, Red Hand Productions, the troubles haven't completely ended because there's still, like Chris was saying, the threat level's still up there. There's still random bombings and, like, shootings or attempted bombings. Okay, so... Does that mean shot zombie that in theory it's actually there, we just don't know it's there? So could could the North Koreans actually be onto something here? I'll have to go quite soon, but yeah. Are the North Koreans actually onto something? And does um yeah, East Germany still exist, hence why I'm wearing this helmet. But it's it's actually a conspiracy. Do you think that's what the EU is actually about? It's the um, East German Empire. I can look on BBC News quickly before I go off, but we were just talking about the Troubles earlier, which was the sort of conflict. Um, Brexit deal essentially impossible, number 10 source. So that's Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. So does that mean that essentially it's just going to be a no-deal Brexit because the EU isn't going to ever compromise on it? I've actually heard a theory like that, Red Hand Productions. A very interesting one I've heard is, in 1984, how do you know that the rest of the world is actually how it is? And how do you know that, you know, that Oceania doesn't pretend it's like that, and Oceania's actually North Korea and everywhere else is, like, a normal country? <laughs> is that East Germany real? I think at this point, no deal is going to be what has to happen, because you just can't keep dragging it on and damaging the economy non-stop the best thing would have been if the eu could have been reformed in my opinion but if the eu isn't literally going to compromise on any deal there is no point trying to deal with them and you're just going to have to have a you know what's it what do they call it like global trade sort of world trade organization sort of exit and then just go from there because the longer you drag this out the more damage it's doing to european and the british economies I do know that Pepsi used to have a massive navy where they bought it off of the Soviets, but what if communism worked? The world would be a lovely place, but sadly it doesn't. Right, okay. I'll have to probably go now, but yeah. That's a real FN Fowler British L1A1 SLR, but it's deactivated, meaning it will never shoot. But, um, yeah, thank you very much, Shot Zombie, and thank you, Laser, for your donations. But I think Laser's already gone off because he said he was having, like, lag issues. But I do really appreciate that, Shot Zombie. 
I will look into maybe getting some East German Blumenthal if I can ever find any at a good price. But if not, I'll see if I can find some other cool-looking East German stuff to show you. But, um, yeah, we'll have to see what I can find. Oh, so we can actually, yeah, pretend we're the East Germans and we're coming back to claim our rightful communist clay. Can we have our ice on paradise, please? Yeah, just turn up in M56s with some strict tarn on and say, Hello, uh, this is the land that should be you know, belonging to us. Please help us in our global fight for the communism. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Are you on Twitch tonight, Mike? Before I go off and have to PM you on Twitter. But this has been a very fun stream, and thank you, everybody, for the donations. All right, cheers, History. I'll try to remember to subscribe to you at some point. Yeah, right, Mike, I've partially finished my sound issue. Um, fixed it. It's not fixed, but again, I've gone back to using the motherboard sound card, which I don't want to do. I'm not using my actual sound card. Sound card, so it sounds fine. It's just not very loud. Then you wouldn't exist, Yellow Blue. Or would you as a different person? Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, there's lots of interesting things. Anyway, right. See everybody. Good evening and have a good night, everybody. See ya.